Rachel Nguete, and I am reporting for Namibian community in the USA. I am here at the gender-based violence discussion here at the World Bank, and I'm especially here because one of our fellow Namibians, our famous designer, Ham Matsi, also known as Ham Hambela Leni, She's here to give a presentation on gender-based violence in Namibia and also using fashion. So just stay tuned. I hope you enjoy the, um, the discussions and you get something from this event on how to stop gender-based violence. Women is a pervasive problem worldwide. It affects all countries, rich and poor, big and small. Uh, in last year, the World Health Organization put out a report um, uh, it termed violence against women a global health problem of epidemic proportions. That was following a, a, a study that they prepared. It's been limited to date. We had um, committed people in, in pockets of the bank uh, working on this issue. But uh, from just the fact that we have this, this major um, exhibition on gender-based violence here at the World Bank, shows that this is changing and that we at the bank are also coming to, um, to terms with the fact that this problem is so big that we can't uh, Henry Matsi is a fashion designer and entrepreneur from Namibia and founder of Victims to Survivors, a non-profit organization that aims to educate young women and girls on issues of gender-based violence. Uh, Pauline Muchina comes from the Rift Valley province in Kenya. She's founder of Future American Leaders Project. Future African Leaders Project, did I get that wrong? Sorry, I apologize. Uh, it's a program that's designed to help young leaders, uh, helps pe uh, youth from disadvantaged situations, but Pauline's life goal is to challenge injustice facing women and girls. It's something that uh, um, she does throughout her work. So let's move now finally to him. Uh, oops to talk about your experience in, in Namibia. Thank you. All right, good afternoon, and thank you very much for this invitation. And so far, I'm loving your beautiful country. I got here yesterday. <laughs> um, to speak after such amazing speakers is a bit uh, intimidating, but I, wanted to, I want to leave with, with you with one word, which is creative. Let me show you my experience with working on gender-based violence in Namibia. Violence against women and girls, um, in the context of which I work in, happen mostly at home. And that is a place where young women, girls, are supposed to feel safest. Now, if you don't feel safe at home because of the violence that happens to you, where on this planet are you supposed to feel safe if you don't feel safe at home? I also wanted to say that most of us, without knowing, do contribute to violence against women. We contribute to the increase of violence against women. Because without knowing it, when your colleague or your neighbor is beaten or is raped, instead of giving that support system to them, we gossip and we talk behind their backs. So at the end of the day, we don't make it better and we contribute unwillingly to gender-based violence. Now, I think one of the biggest problems of gender-based violence is the fact that of the stigma that's attached to it. It happens to so many women. A lot of women are being beaten at home, they are being raped, they are being abused, but nobody talks about it because we live in an environment and we've created society where there is no support for victims of gender-based violence. When a woman is raped, the first question they ask you is, were you wearing a miniskirt? Did you seduce him? But hello, I just got raped. Mm -hmm. Instead of being supported, we are being victimized. Also, when a woman is beaten, is when she comes to work, she cannot, she has to apply makeup. Otherwise, she will be the joke of the whole. Everybody will be talking about it because there is no support. And this is these are the societies that we've in, that we've created in which that we live in. And I think these are part of the things that we need to change if one day we want to live in the world or environment free of gender-based violence. I would have loved to see more men here though. Because, you know, one of the biggest problems as, as well is that gender-based violence is seen as a woman issue. And it should not be a woman issue because a man has got uh, sisters or you've got daughters or you've got a wife or a mother. So why is it labeled as a woman issue when it affects all of us and the ones that we love? So next time I hope to see more men represented at such functions. Now, um, 
I represent Namibia at the United Nations Artist Council, and our mandate is the council is to come up with creative ways. And I'm also the Vintu Klaga ambassador of the arts. I'm not sure how many of you have tested Vintu Klaga, but yeah, it's one of the best uh, beers. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait. If you ever you find yourself in Africa or wherever there's Vintu Klaga, get a sip of that. <laughs> now, um, we have got we have got a small NGO called Victim to Survivors, and our main and role for Victim to Survivors is to help. Um, bringing the victims of gender-based violence for them to become survivors and victims of gender-based violence. We do creative ways. Um, we try and engage men and the youth. Because what I think is, I think it's gone up the days when we put up posters and flyers and say stop gender-based violence. We need to come up with creative concepts and creative ways to to attract attention of the youth, men and boys, get them involved in saying no to gender-based violence. Then of course we need to get our women to talk up, to speak up on gender-based violence. We need to, to get champions of change. I love, I love the campaign that's going on in Brazil at the moment. Um, and I hope it can be replicated to different parts of the world where you have men who are champions of change, men who say no to gender-based violence, men who say it's not cool to beat up a woman, it's not good um, to beat up um, a young girl. Those are the campaigns that we need to, to bring forth, creative campaigns. Um, one of the, the, the campaigns that we've done in Namibia is called the Art Therapy Workshops. We've gotten women who have gone through gender-based violence to come to art therapy workshops and what happens it's very interesting to see how a woman who, have ne who is not an artist who have never been involved in art but you give them a piece of paper and you give them a pencil and you give them some color pencil and you ask them how are you feeling or how did gender-based violence make you feel and what they will draw and, and where do you see yourself or what would you want to see or who would you want to be or what did gender-based violence take from you and the answers that you get from the, the pictures that they draw is absolutely amazing. And also towards the end of those art therapy workshops, women come and they say, look, I've never spoken up on gender-based violence, but now I feel like I can talk about it. I feel like seeing another woman or hearing another woman talk about it, that it's okay for me to actually talk about it, which is good because we need to get our women talking about it. We need to get our men involved in gender-based violence. And I always say if HIV and AIDS, if um, unemployment, if all the other issues that we have as human beings could not unite us, then let gender-based violence unite us because if it's not happening to you, it's happening to a sister or somebody that you know or somebody that you love. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. A sure sign that things have changed. I've been working on gender issues for 20 plus years and this is the first time that one of the common themes coming across from the panelists is the male issue. So it's, it's really amazing. I want to apologize for the fact that we don't have any men on the panel. Uh, that we did try, but maybe we didn't try hard enough, so we'll have to <laughs> do better next time. I'm going to open up to do that. Uh, well, at the beginning of my presentation, I did mention that some of us here do uh, play a role in increasing gender-based violence without actually knowing it. And I think white beta is just one of the t-shirts that are very um, there's even worse than white beta. There is um, this, this, there are other t-shirts that are being worn all around the world that are, are worse than white beta. But because we we don't know what we're doing, or we think it's cool, we, it's, it's a fashion statement. White beta. How can you possibly walk around in a t-shirt greeting white beta and you're proud of yourself? In fact, you should stay at home and lock yourself at home and not get out of your house with a t-shirt like that. <laughs> But this is what's happening. The people are ignorant. People think this is cool. How can that be cool at all? How can we even support and look at the men and women wearing... Uh, there is even a lady version of it, by the way. Like, wife beta, like, they would post on Facebook, wife beta the men and wife beta the woman. And you look, look at this woman. What if tomorrow she's the one being beaten? And you are there posting with things like that. So we do things like this without knowing what we are doing. Uh, outside uh, here, there is a, a wedding dress um, that I've designed that was um, it, it's for um, young brides. In Africa, there's a lot of young girls who are forced into young marriages. And this is, instead of using fashion in the way of um, 
raising awareness and, and seeing this is what happens when, when young girls are forced into marriages. Yes, we celebrate it's a wedding, it's a wedding. But when they go home, they are being abused and they are raped every single night. And that's why uh, the, the wedding dress you see, it's, it's, it's got blood stains to it. To just say, show that this is what happens when these actions take place, when we allow, allow a society and we celebrate, we go to these weddings and we go and enjoy ourselves. Our sisters and brothers from Africa, you, you, you'll be familiar with this. We go to this wedding and we celebrate without knowing what we are supporting. So this uh, white bitter t-shirt is the same thing. We are just like this, narrow-minded, wearing these t-shirts without even knowing what it is. We do, some of us, um, um, play a role in increasing gender-based violence with or without knowing women and men. Thank you. Okay. If, if we want to live in a world that is free of gender-based violence, it starts with all of us. And it starts with, like she said, the t-shirts that we wear, what are they saying? Uh, we, it starts with supporting our our colleagues, our neighbors, our, our sisters. It's, it just starts with every single one of us. And it starts with next time bringing our husbands to be here as well. Thank you. <laughs> Most governments and most people are concerned about the crazy people who are throwing grenades and those who are exploding bombs. But women in their homes, girls in their own homes, are terrorized on a daily basis. And nobody is calling this terrorism. I hear the hype about terrorism and I'm outraged that people are being killed. But I'm more outraged that terrorism against women has been going on for centuries, and we're doing very little in that perspective. It ranges from domestic violence to female genital mutilation, child bride, sexual violence, harassment, kidnapping, trafficking, and economic discrimination. My own home country, Kenya, the demographic survey in 2010 said that 45% of the women in Kenya have experienced violence in one way or another. According to Population Council study also in 2009, in Zambia, 59% of all women have experienced violence. Ethiopia, 59%. I mean, it's shocking figures. The kidnapping of school girls in, in Nigeria you know, has made us angry and perplexed at the same time. Why is there not enough services, enough resources targeting the people who are doing this to, to, to children, to girls? And this group, Boko Haram, is so emboldened, they actually just kidnapped 20 young mothers this morning. You know, 20, well, they, did, they got away with 200. Why can't they get away with 20? <coughs> Who is going to stop them? When the Malaysian airline went down, there was phenomenal response. Media, mm -hmm. you know, finances being thrown into it. Human capacity was <laughs> unimaginable. I can't help to ask how much resources has gone into saving these girls and the women now who have been kidnapped. We all know that DRC is the, cap the capital of rape, where women's bodies have become the battlefield. In Sudan, just recently, a woman sentenced to death because she converted and married a Christian. The list is horrific, it's long, I can't go through it all. And the region is still lacking integrated system of disaggregated data and most countries in Africa are not reporting what's going on with gender-based violence. I am outraged. Are you outraged? Yes. Are you outraged? Yes. 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 Are you outraged? Yes. yes. Okay, so we need to do something about it. If you are outraged as I am, then let's look at the root causes. Obviously, one of the root causes is gender beliefs and practices, traditional gender norms that support the superiority of men above women, social norms that tolerate and justify violence. Both men and women in Africa, many of them, 
accept gender-based violence as a norm. Many communities are sanctioning violence against women, and they are also protecting perpetrators. High level of crime in society, like in Kenya, where I come from, and other places like in DRC, you know, make it easy for women and girls to be more vulnerable to, I mean, to, to violence. And of course, economic destitution. Some of the solutions that are being proposed, which I agree with, and I will mention a few, um, is implementation of laws that, and policies that protect women and children. All the countries in Africa, except Somalia, have ratified CEDAW. But are they really doing anything about it? Of course, they do it so that they, very little, so that when they come to report at the UN, they can show a few figures, and they, nobody asks them after they've presented those few figures. The problem is, women and girls continue to suffer and therefore the whole society. I strongly believe that gender-based violence and gender discrimination is undermining development, health, and everything else you can think of in Africa and in other places. In addition, we have to look at engaging men and boys because without raising the awareness about this issue, we are not going to go very far. As, you, as the two speakers have already said, we have to begin early. You know, that's why one of the things I'm working on is uh, future African leaders, modeling new forms of leadership, new forms of relating to one another, so that these children will grow up knowing that gender equality is the norm. Ending gender-based gender violence is the norm. Gender-based violence is not a norm. I, I believe that we can do that by raising these children in a way that they can grow up knowing that that's not possible. I know there's so many other things that have been proposed, and one of them I will mention is providing services for survivors of gender-based violence. And most governments in Africa are lagging behind on this. You know, most of the NGOs, or some of the NGOs are trying to do it, but the resources are very few. You know, even in many, uh, many uh, countries, you will find that institutions such as the World Bank is trying to make it happen even for their own staff. But there are always challenges. So we have to do more than we are already doing. We've done some, but we still have a long way to make, to, to make it happen. I know that you can, we can always... Uh, Decide whether we are going to do it or not, and you can say, oh, this is not my experience. Therefore, I don't have to do anything. But by not doing anything, you are contributing. You are a perpetrator of the violence. So my hope here is that we will learn what to do. You know, not just to hear speeches, and then we go back to our offices, and we are fine. But definitely, knowing what we can do. I, there's so much I can say. But <laughs> we can talk about it. Sorry, apologies. Hi, once again, I'm Rachel Niwete, reporting for Namibian community in the USA. Thank you so much for watching. I'm here at the um, gender based violence discussion at the World Bank in the USA, Washington, D.C. Right here with me, I have our Namibian designer, Herr Matsi Handeleleni. Thank you so much for coming to the United States of America. We are so happy to have you. So how did you end up here? Well, I did it. I had a, an exhibition in Geneva last year, December, and then I was invited to Kansas City yeah. in February this year. And I think probably through this exhibition, I got here to Washington. Wow, so the World Bank invited you here. Yeah, it's really an honor. That's huge, guys. The World Bank, the biggest international organization. Exciting! Exciting! So tell us, okay, so what exactly are you doing here? What are they about you Well, I came to a presentation on gender-based violence where I was um, um, kind of uh, showcasing or sharing the experience of what we do on gender-based violence in Namibia. And of course, to showcase my artwork, it's going to be part of the big exhibition of the one in three of the World Bank to end gender-based violence. Wonderful. These are definitely wonderful designs. 
You know, this one right here, that's a wedding dress. Yeah. Tell us more, what inspired that design? Um, in, in, in Africa, there's a lot of young girls that are forced into young marriages. You've got this 10 year old, 11 year old that are forced to marry this um, old man right. so that they can bring money into the family. Okay. But really what happens is these young girls are forced into these marriages and they are being sexually abused every single night. Mm -hmm. They are robbed of their fundamental right. human right. right. Rights to education, they don't go to school. Exactly. So it, it, it would have been a beautiful wedding dress, but because of the abuse that these girls mm -hmm. are suffering, that's why you see it's all shredded and so bloody stained. Yeah. It's because of the violence that happens to these girls that are forced into young marriages. Oh, wow. And that's very common in Namibia, Hilary Angel. Not married. necessarily in Namibia, it's not very common in Namibia, but it's common in Africa. Okay, yeah, that's it's true. true. And that's, thank you so much. This is definitely a beautiful dress. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, you know, it's sad what it stands for, but it's a beautiful design. And then this one right here is broken house. This one is a beautiful dress in all the broken house because this is what happens to women when they get abused. Yeah. We are left with broken hearts. True. Yeah. This is really, 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 really wonderful. And tell us more. Uh, you're a fashion designer in Namibia. Mm -hmm. You are one of the biggest fashion designers. If you watch this year's Nama Awards, everybody, <laughs> almost everybody was dressed by him. <laughs> I want to be dressed by him. You better get dressed by him. I will be dressed by him. So tell us more. If somebody wants to get dressed by him, what is the process? And just tell us a bit more about your designs. Well, yeah. honestly, my designs are innovative. Um, I like to, to fuse me as a myself, fashion designer uh, with, a, with what the personality of my clients. And I like a touch of bling. You can see that no, yeah, right. there shouldn't be a touch of bling. Right, but that, that's that. Him. So I love my designs, very modern, modern fun, okay. but with a touch of bling that is him. Perfect. Now this bling really stands out. Uh, when I, this was actually my first time meeting him in person, right? Yeah. We've been Facebook friends for a long time. We've been communicating. But as soon as I saw her, I saw the bling. I was like, whoa, that is awesome. So it's definitely a pleasure meeting you officially. And we'll see you soon. I yeah. Be to Perfect, you definitely have to be back. You definitely have to be back. So tell us one quick question. I know we are Namibians in the USA, and we are always curious. How does it feel like to be here? What's your best impression of America? Well, this is probably my third time in America, but my first time in DC. In DC. Where else have you been? I've been to Chicago, I've been to New York, and I've been to Kansas. Oh, wow. She's American. But it's my first time in, in, in DC, and I love it. It's beautiful, and I'm living in this. Um, countryside. Okay. It's green. It's beautiful. Oh, oh now we have a like oh, can I see it more? I just love it. Well, we're I'm actually here. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, join us. We have a nice community of Namibia. Yeah, sure. You get all the of hey, you can stay in both places yeah. too, Namibia and the USA. So she's officially an American. <laughs> Ooh, thank you so much. It was a pleasure fine. talking to you. Sure. Thank That's you. Fine. Thanks, madam. Empowerment of women is very critical. A woman who is, who is economic empowered can walk away from an abusive relationship, can seek health services, and also can seek legal services. Not always, but in most cases it happens. So one of the projects I'm working on is empowering Kenyan women, and not by giving them handouts, because the time for handouts is over. They are talented women who can do miracles with their hands. So, I want to invite you <laughs> to support our project by purchasing a pass that will go towards these women. They are making them, uh, my sister started the program, but now she's working with women living with HIV, women who have been abused. And my role here in the US is to find a market for them. So if you can help me find a market for these women and more women throughout Africa, we'll be very, very happy. I have photos and I have a few that you can purchase <laughs> and I also have flyers for the Future African Leaders Project so please see me after this. Hi, thank you. thank you so much for staying tuned. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was a wonderful event. I learned so much about gender-based violence and that each one of us needs to need to play a part in stopping the violence against women and children. It's a really it's a big issue in the world right now, especially in Namibia. Please, let's each one of us, you watching this video, let's do our part in stopping gender-based violence. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. hey. oh. Kupi maneka, 